I am pleased to introduce myself to those of you who are not from the CSCB community and who may not know me yet. With a background rich in various certifications, I have been teaching the prestigious CSCB certification to students from around the globe for quite some time now. Many of my students have recently requested guidance for the PMP exam. Unfortunately, due to my professional commitments, I am unable to conduct live online classes. Instead, I have decided to create a series of videos focused on PMP exam questions. My goal with these videos is not only to share knowledge, but also to help you successfully pass the exam. This was my small introduction. Now let's start with test number nine. Before I begin, I would request all my viewers to check the description box of this video. Thank you. Question number one. Your team has delivered the first iteration as per the scope defined and agreed in the sprint backlog during sprint planning of the mobile app to book movie tickets to a client. This client is working on agile based iterative deliveries for the very first time. For the iteration demo, only two folks from the client's approval board had joined the demo and even they too seemed unhappy with what they saw during the demo. Their feedback was that the mobile app lacked some features. What could be the reason for this scenario and client's behavior? A. As client is first time using Agile, they don't seem to understand how Agile slash iterative delivery works. B. Unclear scope definition by the client and hence development team could not fully finish the work as per client's expectations. C. The development team did not fully and clearly understand the scope as this is the first iteration and hence the client was not happy with what they showed. D. As clients seem to have more than one person in their approval board, this is resulting in conflicting situations as to who should approve the deliverables. Here, option A is correct. It is clearly mentioned that the team has delivered the first iteration as per the scope defined and agreed upon in the sprint backlog. This means that there was no issue with defining or understanding the scope. Also, not having multiple folks is an issue here, as the scenario did not mention that the two folks who joined have different views of what is delivered. However, since it's the first time that the client folks are using Agile, they don't seem to understand how Agile or iterative delivery works. This is because the team in the above scenario has done the work exactly as per the defined scope. So the expectation of clients to have more features in the app is not justified. The Agile practice guide mentions that there could be challenges in the receiving organization during the early days of Agile adoption which is the cause with the client in the above scenario. As a project manager, you should be aware of these challenges. Question number two. Ben is a PMP certified project manager who is a part of a PMP office. He is allocated to a civil construction project and this project is using a waterfall or traditional project management approach. Ben has observed that most of the team members trust each other which stage of the development stage as per Tuckman's ladder this team currently is at? A. Performing B. Storming C. Norming D. Forming Here the correct option is C. As a project manager, you must understand that teamwork is a critical factor for the project success and developing an effective project team is one of the primary responsibilities of the project manager. Hence, project managers should understand that not every team is at the same level of the development. One of the most common development models is the Tuckman's ladder. According to this model, a team is said to be in the norming stage when team members learn to trust each other. Question number three. The new mobile app project which Tina is leading as a project manager is quite similar to the recently launched mobile app by an other team in her organization. This particular app is not strategically as significant as the earlier app and hence there will be resource scarcity for her on this new app project. Previous project manager has maintained many learning artifacts such as risk register, issue logs, etc. For such a project, which of the following can she skip with minimum impact on the project's objectives? A. Quantitative risk analysis B. Risk identification C. Implementing the risk response D. Qualitative risk analysis here, option A is correct. 
Quantitative risk analysis in project management is the process of converting the impact of risk on the project into numerical terms. This numerical information is frequently used to determine the cost and time contingencies of the project. In order to conduct a quantitative risk analysis, you will need high quality data, a well-developed project model and a prioritized list of project risks. Usually quantitative risk management requires extra time and cost and is typically done for large and complex projects that are strategically significant for the performing organization. In the above case, the project manager is constrained by resources and she also knows that this project is not as strategically significant as the earlier app one. Therefore, she can skip the quantitative risk analysis step with minimal impact since she can obtain such data from the project management office from the previous project. Question number four. Lisa is a project manager and she works in a PMO department of her organization. Her organization through their PMO is planning to develop a roadmap to ensure the employees working in the organization have a high motivational level specifically for the long term projects that span more than 24 months. Which of the following Lisa should avoid doing to achieve the above stated goal? A. Empower the team by aligning their personal goals with projects goals. B. Encourage the team to work independently. C. Direct the team by giving clear directions of what to do and how to do. D. Empower the team to participate in decision making. Here option C is correct. As a project manager, you should know that teams are the primary means through which most companies accomplish important work. When you combine the energy, knowledge and skills of a motivated group of people, you and your team can achieve significant milestones. What motivates people goes beyond simply providing them with a salary. Salaries may only encourage people to show up for work every day. However, once they are at work, a person's productivity level can vary from someone who undermines the project and is a net drain on it to a critical contributor who brings passionate innovation to the organization. Often a person's position on this scale is based on their level of motivation. Therefore, you should avoid micromanaging your team by telling them what to do and how to do it. There are other options that are better choices to keep team members motivated. Question number five. Cute Valley Inc. is a large conglomerate with employees spread all over the world across time zones, cultures and countries. The employees are a mix of I-shaped and T-shaped skills and include people with diverse experience ranging from freshers to 20 plus years of experienced people. David is working as a project manager and he has been asked by the PMO to form the team to deliver the next AI based project. How should David go about forming the team? A. David should take an advantage of the fact that the organization has mix of I-shaped and T-shaped skills and he can selectively pick I-shaped skills who offers more to the project. B. David should take an advantage of the fact that the organization has people with diverse experience ranging from freshers to 20 plus years of experience and he can selectively pick only the people with 20, year, 20 plus years of experience who offers more to the project. C. David should take an advantage of the fact that the organization has employees spread all over the world across the time zones, cultures and countries and build the team with diversity and inclusion. D. David should take an advantage of the fact that the organization has mixed of I-shaped and T-shaped skills and he can selectively pick T-shaped skills who offers more to the project. Here option C is correct. T-shaped or I-shaped skills or individuals with only superlative experience of 20 plus years might not be the best choice in the scenario described as this approach could render the project team one-dimensional. Instead, embracing diversity and inclusion as an integral aspect of project management. Value is derived from differences and diverse teams can yield superior performance. This is because project professionals and team members hailing from diverse backgrounds and cultures are likely to possess varying experiences and perspectives that they can contribute to the team and the project. Furthermore, there can also be a profound sense of inclusion and community fostered when people with diverse backgrounds and abilities unite for a common purpose. Question number six. Daisy is a project manager and she is working on her project whose objective is to create ceiling fans under $100. These fans are to be sold in developing countries. 
She is finalizing her approach on stakeholder engagement. Which one of the following should she adopt? A. Stakeholder engagement activities start before or when the project starts and continue throughout the project. B. Stakeholder engagement activities start after the project start and don't continue throughout the project. C. Stakeholder engagement activities start after the project start and continue throughout the project. D. Stakeholder engagement activities start before or when the project starts and ends after the project planning. The correct answer here is A. The project exists within a political environment populated by all those who have a particular stake or interest in the outcome of the project. Stakeholders are individuals who have a stake or an interest in a project or strategy undertaken by a company or an organization as they will be affected in some way by the project. As a project manager, it is important that you begin stakeholder engagement activities before the project starts or when the project starts and you should keep your stakeholders engaged throughout the project. Question number seven. Jim is a software developer with a three years of experience. He works with an other developer, Mark, who has five years of experience. Both of these developers are going to work with you on your new project. You being their project manager, want them to succeed in the project. Which one of the following should you do to make them perform well on your project? A. You should work in a collaborative fashion with them and should define in details on how they work. B. You should work in a collaborative fashion with them and you should ask them to work in silos to generate more diverse ideas. C. None of the given choices represent a right away. D. You should work in a collaborative fashion with them and you should let them define how they want to work. Here, the correct answer is D. One of the roles of a project manager is to empower the project team and its stakeholders. Empowerment basically means that when employees are provided with information, resources and opportunities while being held accountable for their job outcomes, they will be more productive and experience higher job satisfaction. In this scenario, you should collaborate closely with both the developers and most importantly, allow them to define how they want to work. Providing detailed instructions on how they work amounts to micromanagement and experience demonstrates that individuals who are empowered to make decisions about their work methods perform much better than those who are micromanaged. Working in isolation contradicts team collaboration and effective teamwork and it is not recommended. Question number eight for the new shoe which uses a specially customized leather to be successful. The marketing team has determined that the organization must launch this product in the next seven weeks as another competitor is very close to launching a similar product in the market very soon. Besides, this is the first kind of project for the organization. Lee is the project manager and he has to start the project planning for the aforementioned project, which is approved by the project sponsor. What should be Lee's approach to project planning? A. Lee should do the in-depth upfront project planning as the emphasis for the project is speed to market. B. Lee should do the minimum upfront project planning as the emphasis for this project is speed to market. C. Lee should consult the PMO and get the project plan from the organization's library of, the, of assets from a previous similar project and tailor it to this project's need. This will save time and the team will get a ready to use project plan swiftly. D. Lee should not bother doing project planning as the time is very short and instead should ask team to work on execution. Here option B is correct. Doing too much upfront planning is not very helpful, especially when the project's emphasis is on speed to market. In this scenario where the company needs to launch the product within a short span of seven weeks, it is crucial for the project manager to conduct brief yet sufficient upfront planning to enable the project team to deliver the project's objectives. Having zero or no project planning is not advisable and overly detailed planning is not feasible either. Furthermore, the project manager cannot simply retrieve a project plan from the organization's library of assets for a previous similar project and adapt it to this project's need. As mentioned in this scenario, this is a first of its kind project for this organization. Question number nine. Kevin's team is working on a cloud computing project. They are using a traditional waterfall approach to execute the project. K 
Kevin being a project manager of the team is working on a plan for project changes which may occur in future. Kevin wants to understand who should or can approve the project changes. Which of the following can approve or reject the project changes? A. Project team B. Project sponsor or change control board C. QA department D. PMO Here the correct answer is B. It is impossible to have a project with zero changes. Project changes are inevitable during the project life cycle. No matter which project approach, traditional or agile, the project might be using. In order to minimize the negative effects of these project changes, a proper change management plan should be implemented by the project managers. It is important for the project manager to understand who can approve the project changes. It could be an identified individual such as a project sponsor or it could be a formally charged group of people responsible for reviewing, evaluating, approving or rejecting changes to the project. A change control board is sometimes referred to as a change review board. Usually it is a group of people from the project team that is responsible for reviewing, evaluating, approving or rejecting changes to the project. Question number 10. The year 2020 saw the COVID-19 pandemic affecting multiple projects and teams across the globe. Your team was no exception. The team was working on a software development project with a total 10 members. Which of the following aspects of the team would have been most severely affected by the COVID-19 restrictions? A. Working hours B. Osmotic communication C. Daily stand-up D. Project planning meetings here, option B is correct. The real PMP exam may ask a few questions after the COVID-19 pandemic hits the world in 2020. As a project manager, you still need to run the project despite COVID-19 restrictions. And hence, this question is specifically added to cover a few such scenarios. COVID-19 certainly affected many aspects of the project team's work, such as adjustments to working duration and project meeting timings. However, one thing COVID-19 almost certainly did is force the team to work remotely, mostly from their homes, thus impacting osmotic communication. Osmotic communication refers to the useful information that flows between team members who are working in close proximity to each other as they overhear each other's conversations. Since close proximity is no longer there, teams are not able to leverage osmotic communication during the COVID-19 pandemic. Question number 11. Haruto is a project manager working in an e-commerce company in Tokyo, Japan. He is working on the scope management part of the overall project management plan for the new project that began few days ago. Which of the following should Haruto's scope management plan focus on? A. Scope management plan should include the processes required to ensure that the project includes all the work and the additional work to satisfy the stakeholders need to complete the project successfully. B. Scope management plan should include the processes required to ensure that the project includes all the work and additional work to satisfy the stakeholders need and senior leadership management's need to complete the project su successfully. C. Scope management plan should include the processes required to in ensure that the project includes all the work and only the work required to complete the project successfully. D. Scope management plan should include the processes required to ensure that the project includes any work required to complete the project successfully. Here option C is correct. It is crucial to familiarize yourself with scope creep and goal plating for the PMP exam and project management in general. As a project manager, it is your primary responsibility to ensure that scope management includes the processes required to ensure that the project includes all the work and only the work required to complete the project successfully. Any additional work that is not in the original scope of the project is called goal plating. Goal plating occurs when the project teams adds extra features that were not part of the original scope, usually as freebies for the client. Often, goal plating is well mentioned and may initially seem like a good idea. The client may appreciate the extra work but it can also upset them since the changes were made without their approval. Either way, goal plating is detrimental to the project and is not the correct PMP procedure. Question number 12. Lee is from South Korea and he works as an agile project manager in South Korean company who makes mobile handsets. 
Lee is about to compose or form a project team for his upcoming project to build a geolocation mobile app for his company's flagship mobile phone. Which of the below Lee will pay least attention to? A. Identify the clan and tribe details of the team members. B. Identify the years of experience the team members has. C. Identify the level of proficiency of the team members to accomplish the project work. D. Identify the skill set required in the team members to accomplish the project work. Here option A is correct. As a project manager, your focus should be on the skill set required, the level of proficiency and the years of experience that team members possesses when you are forming a new team to deliver a project. While it is important to understand the cultural background from which team members originate, the specific details of one's clan or tribe should not be a factor on which a project manager should focus which for while forming a new team to deliver a project. Question number 13. Last week, there was a risk workshop session in the London, UK office for Tim and his team. The project management office was responsible for conducting a week-long session about the risks and how to deal with them across the projects. You have attended this workshop and got a good knowledge of overall risk management processes, which are set to be used in the project. Which of the following statements is not true about risk management? A. Project risks can be both positive called opportunities and negative called threats and teams should develop a plan to deal with both. B. If the project risks are not managed, then these risks have the potential to deviate the project from its original objective and could result in project failure. C. For a project, there are risks at two levels, individual risks and overall project risks and teams should develop a plan to deal with both. D. Project risks can be both positive called opportunities and negative called threats and teams should develop a plan to deal with threats. Here option D is correct. Risk can be both positive and negative. As a project manager, you should have a plan to deal with both positive and negative risks. If there is a no risk management in the project, it will obviously result in many of those risks turning into issues that could cause delays cost overruns and many other potential issues that could derail the project from achieving its objectives. Quest number 14. George works as a project manager who is assisted by Charles who works as a business analyst. These two folks work with Julia who is the project sponsor. The project team consists of solution architect. John and project team members include Jason, Johnny and Joe. This group of folks are working on delivering a blockchain project to their esteemed customer. Who among us the group should practice the leadership activities? A. Julia, George, John, all three of them should practice the leadership activities. B. Julia, she is the project sponsor and she should practice the leadership activities. C. The whole project team should practice the leadership activities. D. George, he is the project manager and he should practice the leadership activities. Here option C is correct. Leadership should not be confused with authority. Remember, authority is the position of control given to the certain individuals within an organization. It is the right to exercise power. Usually, authority is granted to an individual through formal means such as charter document or designated title. On the other hand, leadership is not exclusive to any specific role. So in a project environment, any team member or all the team members can engage in leadership activity. Question number 15. Lot of defects are logged by the testing team who is testing the functionalities of the newly developed cloud-based solution. There is an observation that about 80% of the defects are from two areas, storage module and authentication module. As a project manager, you wanted to know the root cause of the high number of defects. Which of the following should you use? A. Cause and effect diagram. B. Scatter diagram. C. Defect histogram. D. Affinity diagram. Here option A is correct. While you may not directly use them on a project, for the PMP exam, familiarize yourself with the seven QC tools. In the above scenario, the aim is to uncover the root cause of defects in the project and hence the team should use a cause and effect diagram also known as a fishbone or Ishkiva diagram as it helps users identify the various factors or causes leading to an effect 
usually depicted as a problem to be solved. Named for its resemblance to a fishbone, this quality management tool works by defining a quality related problem on the right hand side of the diagram with individual root causes and sub causes branching off to its left. The causes and sub causes in a fishbone diagram are usually grouped into six main categories including measurements, materials, personal, environment, methods and machines. These categories can help you identify the probable source of your problem while keeping your diagram structured and orderly. Viewers, if you find value in this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon. Thank you.